Hey, what's going on YouTube? Will here from All Electric, back again with another video. And you can see I got the Cybertruck in my garage, and I'm gonna show you later in the video how you can get it in your garage today. So we got a software update 2019.40.2.1, and we got a couple improvements here. First of all, supercharging improvements, which now lets you go up to 200 kilowatts and adjacent lane speed, and so it's gonna track the other cars around you and adjust your speed if you're kind of flying down the highway. Automatic wiper improvements, which it was raining today, so I did get to test that, which you'll see in this video. And they apparently have a lot of data and a lot of images that they're using for this network to try to improve these automatic wipers, which is pretty cool. Next is automatic lane change improvements, and I definitely, definitely saw a huge improvement with that, and I got a lot of video of that that I will show you in this video. It's almost exactly how I would change lanes, which is really cool. And then auto steer stoplight warning, which I did get some video of, and it is very similar to the stoplight warning that you did see in one of my past videos. So I take the car out with the new update. It is nighttime, and I'm able to engage autopilot, and of course, after every update, it's kind of like a new car, so I'm a little bit more nervous on how the autopilot's gonna perform, even though it's already done this road before. Like, I've already taken the car on this road before, but since it is a new update, I'm a little bit more cautious. I would say that this autopilot update, I've spent about 30 minutes to an hour in the car on this update, and it does perform very smoothly. We have a pretty significant curve coming up here, and it does a really good job. Now, I don't know if that's just me or not, but every single time I get a software update, I'm a little bit more cautious of the autopilot until I get more comfortable with it because it is a new software that we're running in the cars. Let me know down in the comment section below if you feel the same way that I do. Now you can see here, these some of these curbs are pretty significant, but the car is maintaining that 40 miles per hour that I have it set to the max speed at. And I'm gonna take it on some pretty severe curves coming up here to see if the car does still slow down. And we can see here it dips below 40 on that curve there and gets down all the way to 33 before it starts to speed back up. The other thing I wanted to mention was I noticed that you can now go below 18 miles per hour before autopilot was limited to a minimum speed of 18 miles per hour. And you are not limited to that anymore. And I actually took it down to zero miles per hour. You can see here that it's down at zero miles per hour and autopilot is still engaged. When you would use this, I'm not sure, but it's really cool. Autopilot is still engaged and I'm going three miles per hour. I set the max speed to three miles per hour. I guess the only real use case with this that I can think of is if you were in a parade or something like that. If you can think of another use case, let me know in the comment section below. I tested the stop sign warning out on a couple different intersections and it worked perfectly every time. So it begs the question, why isn't Tesla just stopping the vehicle? Even in a situation like this, because the parked cars, it's hard to see the stop sign, the car still is recognizing that it is a stop sign there and warning the driver to stop. So just like the stop light detection where we get the stop light, now you just get a stop sign in the same spot. I really hope to see them roll this out soon so that it will actually stop the car at the stop signs and the stop lights. But I guess they're trying to collect as much data as possible before they roll that out. Now, while I was also testing and trying to find some stop signs with double yellow lines, it just so happened that it was raining so I was able to test out the new automatic wiper improvements. And you can see here that it's just like that little spitty type of rain and the car is doing an excellent job clearing the windshield. Definitely a big improvement over the last software update. Now, as I come around this corner here, you're gonna see the autopilot pick up this car illuminated in gray on the touchscreen. And it comes to a complete stop because this car is parked. So I gave a couple tugs on the steering wheel, but there was no way to get past this car, even pushing the accelerator pedal. It really thought that this car was driving and there was no way to get past it, so I had to disengage. Now I think this is kind of a one-off because of the curvature of the road here and where the car was parked approaching that curve, Autopilot thought the car was parking. Switching gears now to the auto lane changes. It is a huge improvement and the car 
does the lane change almost instantly, which is really impressive. It's really like you, the driver, the human driver, is controlling the vehicle. Now here you can see that it was a little late, although I did initiate the lane change as soon as the driver saw that right turn lane there, but it, not until the car recognized that was a right turn lane did the car take the lane change. So once it recognizes that that lane is clear, it does instantly take that lane change, which is really impressive. You can see here, initiated, and the lane is change is done. So initiate the right lane change, and it is done almost instantly. There is almost zero delay, which as a human driver, that's how you would do a lane change as well, right? You would signal, look, it's clear, and then go. So this is happening almost instantly, which is a huge improvement over previous software updates, especially back to when they first rolled this feature out only on highways. This is a vastly, vastly huge improvement. So here we have another turn lane coming up here and you can see that's where the turn lane starts and the autopilot cameras don't see the turn lane right away even though I signal. So it does get in there a little bit late. I'm really hoping that Tesla is able to improve that, but this auto lane change is a huge improvement and it happens really instantly or almost instantly. You can see there, as soon as I flip the blinker on, it gets right over. And you can see here, I got some stop traffic in the right-hand lane, so I transition over to the left and it instantly changes lanes right over to the left-hand lane. Really huge improvement with these lane changes in this software update 40.2.1. Now, just like in previous software updates, the car will not change lanes, obviously, if there's a car in that lane. So the car will illuminate in red, like you see here on the screen. And now, in this case, you'll notice that my max speed is set to 40, but I've noticed that Autopilot will never accelerate to kind of overtake and then make the lane change. It will always decelerate and then make the lane change behind the car that is in its way or the car that is turning red. So I've got a couple examples of this and here you can see my max speed is set to 65 before I put on the lane change and once I initiate the lane change rather than overtaking this car that is turning red, it does slow the vehicle down. You can see that by the green line and my speed dropping there down to 47 to get behind this white car here. So. I also did some other testing on that around this big truck here. You can see I'm in autopilot, I initiate the lane change, truck turns red, although I'm passing the truck going 55, that does slow me down to 47, 46, 45 before I turn off the lane change rather than just getting in front of the truck, accelerating the car and getting over. So now I do speed up in front of the truck and now I'm gonna turn on the lane change again and it is when I get right even with this car, you can see I'm going 54 now, and rather than slow down, it does go in front of the car, but does not speed up any. Really interesting how the car will not speed up to overtake a vehicle, but rather only slow down after a lane change has been initiated and there is a car in the way. So you can see here right when I'm passing the truck, then it, I'm almost past it and it does slow down until I turn off the lane change. So even with this update, they're doing an even better job of keeping you safe. You can see here, I'm gonna initiate a lane change into the left-hand lane. The lane change starts, but then halfway through, it just kind of jerks me back over into my lane. And at the moment, I'm like, why the heck did the car do that? And it wasn't until I looked in the side view mirror and realized that this van was coming up on the left-hand side and the Tesla was able to see that from way, way far back. Definitely very reassuring to see in this new software update how safety is still paramount even though they're releasing these new kind of instant lane change features. So great job, Tesla. If you haven't experienced autopilot, I believe autopilot pays for itself if you have to sit in any type of traffic. So here we are in gridlock stop and go traffic and autopilot makes this a breeze especially when you add karaoke one last thing that i did notice with this update you can see here i'm charged to 81 percent now i'm trying to charge to 80 percent but when i hit the set limit button it's really difficult to land right on that 80 percent line but they did do an update to the mobile app so if you log into the mobile app now you can set it to exactly 80 percent shows you right there on that left hand side so this 81 percent doesn't happen so this past weekend tmz released this video that they got of elon musk going out to dinner 
and he took the Cybertruck, and you got these bodyguards blocking the interior, I guess. But this story of him just taking the Cybertruck out for a cruise in L.A. did make a lot of headlines. As he's leaving the restaurant, you can see those big wide tires crush this little cone at the restaurant. But it started making me wonder, why can't I have a Cybertruck in my garage? So naturally, I reached out to Elon on Twitter, but he was busy taking other people rides. So I went to AR Cybertruck and downloaded the app, the next best thing, and instantly the Cybertruck was in my garage. All I did was download the app on my iPhone, and it actually did a pretty good job. I was curious on how big this thing would be in my garage. You can see I have kind of a longer than normal, um, but not wider than normal, two-car garage. And the Cybertruck fits. I mean, I'm going to have to move some things in the front of the garage over, but it fits just fine. You can see there I got about six inches of clearance, but it is definitely going to be a tight fit with the Cybertruck and the Model 3. So really cool app. Go to the App Store on Apple and on Android. You can go download it over there. It's only like two bucks or something like that. Well worth it just to mess around with the Cybertruck. You can actually drive it as well. The developer, Pat, who developed this app, did a phenomenal job and has this awesome user interface where you have like a little joystick and you can drive the car. I'll show that to you guys right here. And you can actually put the tailgate down, which is cool. You can see it won't fit with the tailgate down, but it gives you a really good understanding of just the how big this car is. You can see next to a Model 3 in my two-car garage, and it will fit. So... I know my car, my garage is a little bit deeper than normal. We'll put the tailgate up there. Pretty cool um, <laughs> rendering there in AR. So it does fit, although it is a lot tighter than when we had the 3 and the Model X in here. And you can see I'm going to have to move some bikes and some stuff from the front of the truck um, when it does arrive here in a couple years. Really cool app, a really reasonable price at 2 bucks. And so go over there, check it out, and you can have the Cybertruck in your garage today. I want to encourage you, yes, you right now watching this video, to head over to my Patreon and support this channel for as little as $1 a month. Special shout out to Akrama Tool and Nicola Pro for supporting this channel at the top tier. Thank you so much for supporting this channel. I really appreciate it. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit that subscribe button and share this video with a friend. I'll see you in the next one.